so. At the end of each day, the uh, programmers check their work in to Perforce, their source code repository, but it's not done yet, so it's just there for safekeeping. But then when it's actually done, the code has been approved, the unit tests all passed, they check it into Perforce, labeled as ready for test. And every four hours, this uh, ant cruise control goes and checks Perforce and says, hey, you got anything new checked in in the last four hours? If the answer is yes, it checks still now all of the labeled code, everything has been labeled as ready to go, runs the uh, J test, uh, static test that looked for uh, violations of static analysis. Does build, deploys into the test environment, and then it runs all of the tests, every single test that's been built up to that point, creates a status report, emails that to the program leads and managers. Okay. Uh, total tool budget for the development of this uh, was uh, 20,000 US dollars for the test license. Everything else was freeware off of the internet. Took uh, my it's and I, a total of uh, about 18 person weeks, a little less than 18 person weeks to put this together, and that included training everybody how to do it. Training on programs and process, and doing a thorough risk analysis. So, again, what's the missing piece? You know, it's, it's not, it's, again, this was not expensive. And it's not time. It's six, three people for six. Three consultants for six minutes. You know, this, is not, this is not a time thing. It's the missing piece. Discipline. It's just discipline. We know how to do this stuff. We've known how to do this stuff for a long time. We just need to do it. It's all out there. Okay. Now, so I'm expressing this. Discipline, discipline, discipline. we got to do the stuff that we, we know we ought to be doing. You know, and we shouldn't be surprised if we don't bad things happen. You know, I mean, if you don't brush your teeth, then you, you have dental problems later, right? I mean, this is not a shock to anybody, so, you know, let's not rationalize this. we got to have the discipline. But, okay, discipline is part of it, but this, there are other parts. So, teamwork. <coughs> I think it's not revolutionary to say quality is built into a product step by step. Right? Every step along the way, we got opportunities to increase the quality of the work products were decreased. So we got to work together, all of us, requirements engineers, business analysts, developers, testers, users, marketing, sales, tech support, everybody's got to work together to do this. We're going to have a quality product. And working together doesn't necessarily require that we all be friends. And I don't have to, if I'm on a project, I don't necessarily have to spend a lot of personal time with people. It's great if that happens. It's great if you have friends at work. But that's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is effectively working together. We have to not be enemies. We have to all agree that quality is an objective that we all have, that we're all responsible for. And we have to be careful not to be enemies and that don't damage work relationships because once they get damaged, it's very hard to repair. So let me give you an example of that. Um, we went in for one client. We did a big quality process assessment. An associate of mine and I were spent about uh, six weeks working with these guys on and off various sites, talking to people, talking to everybody we could find, testers and non-testers. And uh, there was a lot of antagonism. There was a lot of enmity between people. So you talk to people outside of the testing organization, you ask them what's what's the value of testing? What what what's the objective? Why why do you have testing teams here? What are you trying to accomplish? Most of them would say testing has no value. We heard that quote over and over again. Testing has no value. And that's that's bad. If you're a tester and you've got people in your organization that are walking around thinking, this person's a total waste of oxygen. We would be better off without this person. This just can't, this can't turn out well. The testers, on the other hand, would say, oh, geez, you know, the business analysts, the programmers, they're, they're all lazy. They wouldn't do anything right if we weren't around to police them. And that's how they 
I saw their role, I saw them as themselves as quality cops. Everybody loves cops, right? <laughs> so this is part of the problem, that they're, they're not endearing themselves to people because they're just running around saying, you should do this, you have to do that. You know, oh, okay, and those business analysts, those programmers, they just take all sorts of shortcuts and they damage the quality of the product. And we think they're lazy and stupid. Okay? So the testers think that everybody else is lazy and stupid and everybody else thinks that the testers have no value. And, you know, when we try to talk to people about how do you, how do you, how would you work together to resolve the situation? Nobody wanted to work together to resolve the situation. They, they wanted to see the other side fired. All the testers thought that the business analysts and programmers should be replaced, and all the business analysts and programmers thought the testers should be fired and replaced. So, rather fight. They'd rather, they'd rather be right than, than work together. So, I had a phone call with the executives who sponsored the assessment. I said, I hate to use cliches here, but this is a classic good news and bad news scenario. And they said, okay, well, what's the good news? I said, the good news is that you're about 18 to 24 months away from having real world-class quality. We looked at the metrics and so forth of their processes and the level of quality that they were delivering. They were, they were good. And I said, here's the bad news. You can't get there with the current team. You can't do it. Because they will not cooperate. They simply will not work together to solve these problems. Mm -hmm. And then you know, we had this discussion about what to do, what to do, and it was, you know, they said, well, what if we fired some people? I said, who would you pick? They're all equally culpable in this thing because none of them will work with the others. You can't just point to one of them and say, there's the bad guy, get rid of him and everything will get better. I said, well, what if we fired all of the, the senior managers? I said, you can't do that. Because the line managers below them spend all of their time running around putting out fires that are caused by the conflict within the team. So you have nobody capable of stepping up to take the place of the managers at the top that are the ones who are really creating the venom. Mm -hmm. And the bad relationships, the worst parts were the relationships at the top. The senior managers were the ones that would really sit around and spend time trying to figure out how to make their colleagues look bad. Down at the line manager level and the individual contributor level, they were too busy trying to put out the fires to fight. But sadly, none of those people could be promoted. So the end result was that pretty much all of the IT work got outsourced. So everybody got fired. <laughs> so, now this is not good. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I mean, for those of you who say, well, you know, some amount of conflict is inevitable within an organization, uh, that might be true, but some amount, not that amount, not to the point where you basically commit organizational suicide, right? So we had a, a, another project that was the complete opposite of that. We had uh, requirements of design happening in San Jose, California. We had a system vendor in Taiwan, component vendors in Salt Lake City, Utah, a test lab in Taiwan, a test lab in Los Angeles. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for miscommunication and relationship issues when you get that many parties involved, but we had good coordination and we worked together as a team. That project we delivered on time, with quality, on budget. Again, you know, this is stuff we know how to do. get along and we work together, we can succeed. If we squabble, we'll fail. Okay. Um, so, people have to get along, they have to work together, but they also have to be competent. Again, to go back to the example I was talking about earlier, I mean, watching kids play